Hey guys, uh, this is Pyro and welcome to my last lecture. Chapter 1, Ocean Tides. So, at first it was very difficult for me to come up with a metaphor that I would be satisfied with or that I can really relate myself with. So, I decided to ask my number one influencer, which is my dad, and an idea had occurred to me. My metaphor would be the ocean tides. Uh, if you didn't know, the ocean tides are conducted or dictated by the moon's gravitational pull. So it controls the harshness of the waves as well as the calm and mellow side of the waves. And I thought this metaphor really, or uh, I could really relate to this metaphor as um, I am the ocean tides and my dad is the moon. Uh, he dictates me and guides me to become the person that I am today and I'm really grateful for that. And this is the reason why I chose Ocean Tides as my metaphor. Chapter 2, My Moon and Stars. So the reason why I named this chapter My Moon and Stars is uh, how influential my parents are in my life. They are the people who taught me and raised me to be the to be the person that I am today and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, as you can see, or if you haven't noticed, I'm um, Asian. And normally you would think Asians are very strict or they have a very conservative mindset about how we should have uh, straight A's, are very strict, uh, play the piano and etc. But my parents are the complete opposite of that. Rather, they encourage me to be the person or encourage me to do whatever I want or whatever I feel like would fulfill my life. Uh, for example, if I were to just um, decide to go into a career, I don't know, let's say streaming, um, they wouldn't mind it. As long as I'm happy and I can succeed in that point of life and leave a footprint on earth, uh, they'd be perfectly happy with that. And yeah, they're very influential people in my life and they really motivate me to work harder every single day. And I'm also really thankful for that. Chapter three, money buys happiness. Growing up, I always heard the term that money doesn't buy happiness and I don't think that's true. Well, 100% true. Money really does help relieve like, stress and worry on how to put food on the table every single day or support your family. And that really affected my mindset growing up. Uh, I wanted to become originally a streamer, like earlier. Um, Playing video games, I thought would be such an amazing thing. I get to play video games and get paid at the same time. But then I started thinking financially and the probability of me becoming a really successful person. And it's very low. So I changed up uh, or I jumped to many different other careers that I wanted to become. For example, like a lawyer or a doctor. And that didn't really pique my interest. Uh, and so into high school, I realized that versatility is the number one key to success. Uh, so I decided that my career or currently decided that business, w I would major into business. Business can spread into so many different varieties of um, subjects. Like for example, if I wanted to go back into the idea of marketing uh, implants or selling dental stuff, that works as well. I can go into uh, real estate and sell houses and it just opens up to such a wide variety of different things that uh, I can go into because I know that I'm going to change my mind in the future. And that's chapter three. Chapter four, the wandering happy place. My happy place personally is with my family. Uh, they always make me feel safe and happy despite the times sometimes, of course this happens to everyone, uh, we butt heads with each other and we can, you know, argue, but in the end, we are still family. My dad is without a doubt, and I'm saying this with no exaggeration, he would take a bullet for every single one of us. He is the idol and the person that I aspire to become one day. My mom, on the, on the other hand, she is the most amazing and goofy person in the world and I love her so much. She cares for both, well everyone in the family and she cooks, she cleans, 
and she does so much for the family and sometimes I take it for granted and that's a bad thing but in the end I really do appreciate her and I love her a lot. My younger brother Henry, he is the funniest and most caring kid in the world. Although sometimes I pick on him because, well, he's a brother, but yeah, I pick on him sometimes. Uh, deep down, I love him with all of my heart. He's always there for me and he supports me in every single thing I do. And sometimes I don't express it enough, but he truly is my best friend. Chapter 5, Influences. So, if you haven't noticed yet, uh, my dad is the most influential person in the world to me. He's taught me so many life lessons and basically raised me to be the person that I am today. He is the most, like, if anything, he is the least superficial person in the world. Uh, he's willing to sacrifice anything in his life and I mean anything for us as a family unit and I really do appreciate everything that he's taught me. Chapter 6, Regret. Everybody's gonna live life and they are gonna go through regret. Um, personally, the most regretful thing I've done so far is that I let my parents down. Uh, freshman year, I enrolled in an AP class and and I knew the responsibility with, that came with it. So throughout my entire life, I did, I have played a lot of games and watched TV and I decided to drop all of that um, because I decided that I wanted to pass that AP exam as well as um, go through the year with all A's. And I was able to achieve that because um, I put uh, hard work and dedication to it. Second year, I came into the school year with a new shiny confidence. Um, I had lost weight last year, um, I passed the AP exam and I got all A's and I was really proud of myself and that led to arrogance. Uh, I enrolled in an AP class this year as well, AP European History and first semester uh, I lazed around, uh, I didn't put my full uh, effort into it because I thought oh I'll just gonna, I'm just going to bring it up last semester or last minute and clearly that didn't work. So I brought home the proper support or the semester grade to my parents and really disappointed my dad, not because that I got the grade that I did, but it was because I didn't put enough effort into it. And that is something that I really do regret. Chapter 7, Adults. My view on adults as a wee child, uh, I thought they were just nuisances. Um, they just told us to clean up our toys. Even though they know we take it back out and play with it again, uh, we have to fold the blankets, although we're just going to mess it up again another 12 hours. And that really changed growing up. Uh, my view on adults currently right now is that they just want to see us improve. They throw all these hard demands and high expectations on us because they want to see us overcome the hurdles and grow and mature in life. And they really do just want the betterment of us. Chapter 8, Acknowledgement. So my freshman year, uh, going into freshman year, the summer of going into freshman year, I decided to join water polo. And at the beginning of practices, they would uh, it would be mandatory to swim eight 100s on the 130. This meant that we had to swim four laps in the pool, which is 100 yards in a minute and 30 seconds, uh, eight times consecutively. So basically, uh, I was a little experienced with swimming, so I didn't go into like the shallow end and rather I wanted to challenge myself and go into the deep end but back then I wasn't as athletically capable I had to move down a few lanes because the more experienced and faster swimmers were um, in lanes one and two so I ended up swimming in lane seven and there are these people that would um, talk down on me because uh, like I said I wasn't as athletically capable back then that I am now uh, they would talk down on me. They would say, uh, why is this kid in the sport? He's not fast enough. He's too slow. I bet you he's going to quit on the second day. And I, it definitely did hurt my feelings, but it was a process that I had to do. Uh, later on, at the end of summer, I ended up finishing practice. 
uh, I was able to join the water polo team. And ironically enough, they were the ones that quit. So uh, I was able to laugh in their face. Well, not literally, because, yeah. Chapter nine, Hobbes or Locke. Uh, I view my personality as both. It depends on the day or the mood. And I'm pretty sure this is the same with everyone else. But on days like swim meets, um, I get in my zone and I'm very focused. And being the person that I am, I get very anxious and I develop anxiety. And my mindset isn't the greatest at the time. So I think very negative. And on days where I'm with my family, my wandering happy place, um, I'm very jubilant and upbringing. So it all depends on my mood or day it is. Chapter 10, there is no regret. Uh, this is the last chapter to my last lecture. And ironically, you know, chapter six talks about my regrets in life. And I don't mean to take uh, there is no regret into a literal term because of course everyone's gonna live with regret just try to live life with passion and try not to regret or try to regret as minimal as possible because it just leads to negativity and etc so yeah just live life to the fullest and try to leave a footprint or just something that will impact another person in my life and that's the message that I would want to relay to my if I did have future kids and etc so just you do you and be the best person that you can be thank you for listening to my last lecture